Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Angel's Grotto, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, you are fired... I know that's a clumsy way to put it, but I've been a nurse too many years to learn parlor diplomacy. Besides, you've been here at the Grotto Farmhouse for almost a day now, and you haven't found anything. Not a single thing. Not that you should have. Perhaps I was just hysterical this morning when I called you out here. But now even the police seem to agree, don't they? Mr. Moraga's death last evening was an accident. Yes, an accident. And so much as I appreciate your coming to help, why should you stay on? Sincerely, Emily Flood. Oh, Miss Flood. Miss Flood. Yes? Oh, Mr. Valentine. Oh, here you are. We've been looking all over. Did you get my note? Yes, back at the house, but we wanted to... I don't like it back there. I came Look, out Miss Flood, I, I was a little surprised. After all, I've barely even had a chance to talk to you since we got here. You see, there's very little factual evidence of any kind. Here. Did you check here? There might have been fingerprints on the handrail that no, might no, show... No, 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 we checked all that. Best fingerprint man in the state found nothing to prove anything. Not even on the wheelchair. No sign of a struggle. He hated that wheelchair. Imagine a man only 45 who usually couldn't sit still for a minute... having to spend six months in that thing... It was from a sailing accident. The bone wouldn't heal. Uh huh. Most of the nurses were scared to death of him. But he liked me. Because I wasn't good looking and I didn't have an eye on his purse. And he had told me about this grotto. The angel's grotto. It's beautiful, isn't it? All that moss and the ferns. Yes. And... I saw it first about the same time yesterday. I just brought him out from the train, and he had to come here first thing, even before supper. Did you try to find the angel like we did? Oh, it's just a legend. Indians who used to work at the mission across the ranch. Angel of stone, they say. Crossed by the waterfall, I guess. Yeah. Only it's like all those things, huh? The face and clouds, the mountain shaped like a man's head. You can never really see it. Angel of death. He used to come out here and just sit when he was a little boy, you know. It was all so... Different then, he said. The farm, I mean. Just a place in the woods. And an exciting, scary grotto for boys to tell stories about and dare each other to come close to the edge. They were lovely boys, I guess. Herman hadn't met the bottle and the blondes yet. And that whiny stepbrother who still lives here was just like the real brothers. And John hadn't taken up sailing or broken hips or even gone out to the city to build his steel mills to become the richest man in the state. Why? It's all been murdered. Mr. Valentine. All right, lady, we're sorry. We, we know you're upset. Anyway, there aren't any facts. But last night at supper, well, those guys aren't boys anymore, are they? He hated his family. He said this was the last time he'd ever come back. You want the rest of it? If you're going to fire me, you want my report? Why I say murder? Go on. Well, you were there. You and he and the boys last night, remember? You were all sitting around the table. No, no, I don't want to talk business tonight. I don't want to talk anything. I'm tired. Emily, have you done my unpacking yet? Well, I thought as soon as supper is over, while you sit outside for a while... Sure, your nurse will take care of things, John. 
Here, have another glass of wine. It's special. No, 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 I said. Well, uh, farm isn't business. I only waited till you came, John, to talk about buying a new tractor instead of riding. Oh, for the love of Leave him of alone, Mike. Jake. He's tired. Can't you hear what well, he said? Well, I got a setter coming around tonight. Got to get out there and help her with the pups. I only thought if he could spare a thousand dollars or Leave so, him alone. <laughs> Jake, you... You'll just never understand us business, Mr. Well, farm's a farm. You can't operate stop on it. that. Stop it. Both of you, stop it. I came here for a one-day visit, that's all. That day starts tomorrow. Oh, sure, Johnny. Sure, we understand. I don't come out to the old place often myself, but a little reunion is different, huh? No. I wish I'd stayed in Florida. <laughs> don't blame you. All those classy nurses. Please. Mr. Maraca. Well, Johnny, I know the farm isn't very important anymore to you, but all I wanted to say was... Oh, is... get out to your barn. Go go be a midwife, <laughs> whatever it is. Now, you nurse, <clears throat> see if you can't give the cook out there a hand with the dishes. I notice Mary's not as speedy as she used to be, Jake. Stay where you are, Emily. Herman, for your information, I'm sick and tired of the steel business, too. Huh? You heard me, Mr. Vice President, in charge of gas and wind? Oh. Oh, yes, yes. Get everybody out. Leave us brothers alone. Have some wine. <laughs> you don't want to talk business. Not old Herman. Herman, the diplomatic sponge. Well, I wrote you I'm going to retire, didn't I? In the prime of life, and why not? And that means for my family, too. I'm here to cut all strings at once. Lazy relatives, steel mills, old family homesteads, the works. I'm sick and tired of supporting a worthless bunch please, of... Please, please, don't. You're tired. Yeah. You'll upset yourself. You said everything could wait till tomorrow. Everything you have to say to him. Yes, yes. All right. All right. I'm sorry, Emily. Uh, you two fellas. Wheelchair doesn't make a guy like me very friendly, but, but I mean it. I'm moving to Florida for good. Only, well, we'll talk tomorrow, huh? Sure, Johnny, sure. Sure, we, we understand. No, you don't. You're going to work for a living, Herman. Well, what's the matter with you, Jake? Huh? Earn your own tractor. <laughs> me? I'm tougher than all of you, I guess. Well, what's the matter? Want to murder me or something? Well, come on, come on, say something. Want to murder me or something? And then, Miss Flood, you brought John Moraga out in his wheelchair to sit in the evening air, and you went back to do the unpacking and clean up the dishes for Mary, the cook, who was out helping Jake. Brother Herman, he went to his room, so the testimony says, where he drank that wine all by himself. Jake, he came out and smoked a cigarette for a while with the impatient invalid, then went to the barn and was busy for some time delivering a litter of puppies. Your testimony's very complete, Mr. Valentine. So what? So, 10 o'clock, you came out to bring Mr. Moraga in for the night, and he was missing. Because around 9 o'clock, according to police reports, the doctors, his wheelchair parked here overlooking the grotto where you left him had a little bit too close to the edge. Oh, look out. Oh. Oh. But there wasn't any evidence. You couldn't find anything. No. No, no evidence to show whether the brakes just slipped and the wheelchair rolled over or whether Mr. Moraga was pushed off the edge. 200 feet down to the rocks. All those hatreds and everything. Even motives. But everybody's story seemed to check. Yeah, that's it. Nothing so far can be proved. Mr. Valentine, you kicked that rock just now to see how I would react. Mm, maybe. Well, I think you should understand. There won't ever be any evidence. His death was an accident. I believe that now. So get out. Get out. Please, go Johnny couldn't have been too surprised, Mr. Valentine. Said he saw the angel clear as death. Omen, I guess you'd call it. We smoked a cigarette together down there, you know, half hour before his death. Surprised at what, Jake? Huh? Well, the brake slipped on his chair, don't you think? You figure he was unconscious when it happened. We don't even know that. Look, uh, we're leaving. I only asked... His you. own fault in one way. Had a fixation on that place, he did. 
Ought to be the devil's grotto, I always claimed. Or maybe we could blast the marble and make a quarry. Oh, you see me, Mr. Valentine? Oh, yes, Mr. Moraga. Uh, look, Jake, do you mind? Uh... Yeah, sure, sure, Mr. Valentine. Sure, got to see about my... Mr. Moraga, testimony showed that last night your brother called you vice president in, in charge... In charge of gas and wind. Yeah. Uh, old Johnny was the only one who had any brains here. Any... Are you part owner of the Moraga Steel Mills or just a paid employee? You mean am I just the boss's brother? Yeah. Yes, if you like. Uh huh. And now that he's dead, Aren't you... you leaving, Mr. Valentine? Oh, no, no, don't get me wrong. Jake and I, we appreciate what you've done. But also, we're tired of everybody looking cross eyed at the guys who benefit. I should have told that nurse she was being officious to get you up here in the first place. She was badly upset. Well, so am I. Johnny was my brother. Ah. These little nurses are get more conscientious the richer the patient is. Oh, oh, how dare you! Mary, listen to me. What in the name? I will not, and I won't leave here until I'm I... sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you, but you can't talk like that to me. I'll talk any way I please. I've been here fifteen years. I'll call you all the names I Stop can. It, I said, "Stop it!" All right, nursey, now cut it out. Oh. Cut it out. What'd she do to you, Mary? Huh? What'd she do? Don't look at me that Miss way. Flood? Hey, hey, easy, please. Huh. Miss Flood. Know what she was up to, Mr. Moraga? She was firing me. Yes. She fired me. You... She. You what? Now, look here, Miss Flood. You've been fighting. Take it easy, will you? Here, Emily, you're all right. It was the way she looked. The way she... I'm sorry, Mary. I didn't mean to... You see, Mr. Moraga, I happened to overhear this young lady and a policeman talking. No. You just found out the nurse is really a wife, eh, Mary? (gasps) What's that, George? Just guessing... But it would explain why she could try to fire you, Mary. Why you laugh at the word miss. Not to mention some things John Moraga said last night. Or why just a nurse should be so curious and hire me you and try... You mean this mousy little flat yes, heel? Yes, yes. We were married a week ago in Florida. I did tell the police, Mr. Valentine, I wanted to tell you, but I wanted to wait until... Oh, just because I'm his nurse and he was wealthy. Just because... Stop looking at me like that. Nobody's looking any way they shouldn't. I wondered what his big announcement today was going to be. What made that hot-headed sucker want to sell his business, cut us off, go gallivant and off... Get out of here! Every one of you! This is my house now! Get out! So you married a week and now he's dead. Yes! He's dead! He's dead! Don't look that way. Can't you understand? I loved him. And he loved me. Don't give me that. Oh, I wish I were dead, too. Leave me alone or I will be. I will be. Yes. A good act. Good act, Mr. Moraga? Are you changing your mind? I thought you were so sure your brother's death was an accident. In just a moment, we will return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Tonight, we present another first-hand report on new RPM motor oil, the oil that doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Tonight, you'll go with our scientists test by test as they explore the chemistry of motor oils with a new atomic tool in search of the formula for new RPM. By special transcription now, we take you to the Richmond Laboratories of California Research Corporation, The next voice you hear will be Senior Research Engineer H.F. Galindo. The test engines you hear running in the background are equipped with piston rings, which we had specially treated at the Oak Ridge plant of the Atomic Energy Commission. Geiger counters connected to these engines measure the fine particles of treated metal worn from the atomic ring as that wear takes place. We're using rigid temperature controls to get exact simulation of the toughest engine wear conditions your car gets, the normal, everyday short hops, the stop-and-go traffic driving. We call it cold operation. Two of my colleagues, Harold Vick, engine operator, and Jess Sanders, lead engine mechanic, have filled the crankcase of each of our test engines with a different experimental motor oil formula. 
These experimental oils, by the way, are a few of the hundreds actually used during nearly two years of development. Now let's listen to the Geiger counters as they click off the performance of one of our earlier formulas compared with a recent one. Bear in mind that the slower the counter clicks, the less the wear that is taking place. No, that's too fast. Too much wear. That formula couldn't do the job. Now listen to this. It slowed way down. Yes, that's it. Hear the very slow, measured clicking of the Geiger counter? That oil formula hit an all-time low count on wear rate. It's the one which eventually proved to be the best. The one which, after lots of road testing, we finally released as the new RPM. The new RPM. An oil so superior that it doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. It's yours today at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Angel's Grotto, a place of great beauty, a place where a man fell 200 feet to his death on the rocks below. A man in a wheelchair, sitting alone in the moonlight. But, according to the police, that death was an accident. There's no further reason for you to stay around. Still, if your name is George Valentine... Well, what can you do except stall for time, pretend you can't start your car? Say, uh, look, uh, Jake, is there some rope around here? I may need it when the mechanic comes to give me a tow. Yeah, in the shed over there, help self. Mm. Oh, okay, thanks. Get out of the way. Good idea. So that fool Emily won't hang herself. Ha! There's a good one. <laughs> Come on, Brooksy. Let the rest of them think we've gone. You realize how short our time is? You mean what he just said about Emily? George, I want to go back in and no, talk to No, Brooksy, her. we got to find evidence before somebody else gets murdered. Yeah, these are the tracks, all right, Brooksy. And here's where the wheelchair stood. George, you and the police went over it inch by well, inch. Jake gave me an idea. He was wondering earlier if John Moraga was conscious when he fell, remember? Yes. Okay, now look, I'm John Moraga. I'm in a wheelchair, see, and I'm sitting here. I'm a strong guy. Strong? George, John had been laid up for six months. Well, that's not long enough to break down a dynamo like him. The point is, when he was sitting here, it would have been pretty hard to take him by surprise. You mean somebody slugged him I first? I don't or... know. There's no sign of a struggle. Police thought he might have fallen asleep. George... Suppose he'd been drowned. Huh? I mean, remember that wine last night at Oh, something? yeah, I thought of that. But it's like everything else. Nothing left to show. Nothing left but the tracks of the two wheels here and... Hey, Brooksy, look. They just go in practically a dead straight line all the way out to the edge and over. Okay, Brooksy, throw me that rope there. Oh, George, It's all right you... now. It's all right. This tree will hold me. George... Just take it easy, will you? There we are. This is one thing we didn't check. But, but they combed every rock down below there. They when I kicked that rock loose this afternoon, remember what happened? It bounced. Okay, I'll find out what happened last night, and I won't bounce either. I hope. Hey, Brooksy. I can see the angel from down here. Yeah, it really does look like one, you know. A cross by the... George, your rope's twisting. I'm all right. There's some stuff to hang on to here. Angel of death, huh? I can't even see you anymore. Brooksy. What'd you say, George? Hey, not so loud, will you? I was just looking down before. It's a watch. What? No, no, no. Piece of watch chain. Sure, sure, he did hit here before he dropped to the rocks. I thought so. The way the cliff curves out, it's... Don't go any farther. What if he did lose part of his watch chain? It doesn't tell you anything oh, about... Oh, doesn't it? Hooked on a little twig, some scrub trees here growing in a crevice. Well, you know, it doesn't have any bark. Yeah, that's right, two places here, no bark. I'll tell better in the daylight. But, Brooksy, there are kick marks, too. 
He, he grabbed here as he fell. Must have hung on for some time, several minutes maybe, before his strength gave out. Somebody's coming, George. Mayday. Hey, I called you, but I didn't hear you answer it. Well, I went to see George. I, listen. Listen to what? Well, it's gone now. Okay, come on. Get this rope out of sight. Here, duck back here. Yeah. In the bushes. Yeah, that's better. George, I hate high places. You crazy. But I but... learned something, Brooksy. The fact he clung there proves John Moraga was conscious. He couldn't have grabbed on there unless he was perfectly all right when he went over. He wasn't slugged, doped. Anything. Just pushed. But those straight line tracks... Well, I can think of a person he might have trusted. Never guess what was going to happen until the last minute. Oh, George. Any of them could have come down here without being seen. His shouts when he was hanging there wouldn't have been oh, heard. Oh, Brooksy, look. Stop evading it. You know who I'm talking about. All those tears don't hide her motive. George, I, I just can't believe that a girl would... Yeah. You see what I see? Little Emily. George, she's crying. That's what I heard before. Yeah. Walking like she didn't know where she was. <laughs> George, she wished she were dead, too. She was hysterical, but she said I'm she... like Jake. I didn't take it seriously. But she's going where we were. George, grab her. No, she's no, gonna... no, stop. Uh, uh, Emily? Oh, you stunned me. Oh? <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to. It's Herman. Beautiful night, isn't it? Mr. Murdoch. What are you doing down here, anyway? You know, don't you? Why do you ask? Oh, well, I, I didn't believe a good-looking girl like you with her head and her shoulders would seriously think of carrying out a threat you like... You think I'm ugly. You said so. A stupid, flat-heeled nurse. Uh-huh. Oh, well, really, it isn't any... No, even... stay where you are. I don't think there's room for both of us here, Mr. Moraga. All right. All right. I loved your brother. I loved John. I'm 35. I'm not pretty. I know what I am. But he loved me, too. Now, now. Please don't touch me. Don't come any closer. Oh, it's all right. I know how you feel. It was an accident. Leave me alone. Now, well, just an accident, that's all. I told you. Don't touch me. Well. You're a big fool. <laughs> Right into it, didn't you? Look out, my arm. I've handled patients ten times as tough as you are. My arm. Look out, the edge is right. Believe what I said, didn't you? I believed I'd come down here and be thinking of jumping when it's you who's going Look to go. Right. Come on, Jesse, step on him. He's the one who's liable to be killed. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Get back here, I said. Get back. Let go of me! Okay, sister. <laughs> What happened? What is it? All right, all right. Oh. Take it easy, all of you. Good Lord, what's the matter She's with you? She's all right, George. <laughs> Let go. Leave me alone. She would have killed me. She was trying to I push know, me. I know, I know. We saw we it We thought all. it was going to be the other way around. Oh? It never occurred to me. She has the same motive for getting rid of you, Mr. Moraga. You're the only real brother. You're in her way, too. Uh, Herman, for the love of Pete, why the crazy little fool? I thought that she was... Shove me. She was she trying right, to... Will you please stop it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. We prevented a murder. Now I can prove it. Murder number two. Hey, did you find out something? That... Mr. Fellows, Lady, yes. will you stop crying for one minute, please? I didn't say you killed your husband. You didn't kill John Moraga. George. Emily, the tragedy we prevented tonight was you killing for vengeance because you thought the murder would never be solved. Herman did it. I was sure. Your... The police couldn't find any clues for you, but you were like I was. You knew it had to be murder, and so you tricked Herman into following you down here. The only trouble was when you tried to take the law in your own hands, you picked the wrong person. What? Yeah, that's right. He didn't do it. He's demonstrated that pretty well right now, hasn't he? Only, uh, hey, you, uh, what's your name, Cook? Uh, Mary? Oh. Did you ever see the angel? Did, did I? What? Come on, come on, the angel on the rocks. You've lived around here 15 years, you said. You've heard the legend. Oh, that. No, no, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no angel in the rocks, Valentine. That's oh, just Oh, old... yes, there is. Because I saw it. And John Moraga said he saw it, too. Oh, no. No, he After didn't. you left he... him down here, Emily, he supposedly said it while smoking a cigarette. With you, Jake. Now, yeah, wait a minute. I never said it. Oh, that... yes, you did. I remember it, George. And that was your mistake. Because, Buster, that angel turns out to be a real angel of death. You can't see that rock formation from any place except halfway down a straight cliff. 
No wonder the Indians had a legend. So when could John possibly have seen it except when he was climbing down there after he'd been shoved, clinging there, hanging there? Why did John scream out that he saw the angel? Was he pleading with you to help him? And did you just stand there and laugh at him, Jake? No, no, you're crazy. Me, I'm just a farmer. I don't... Sure, you're a big, strong guy. And that's why the tracks of the wheelchair were nice and straight, Brooksy. A man strong enough could just tip it back, load and all, and give it a roll. Now, you listen to me. I was up with that setter of mine. I was clean out in the barn. Mary, help me. Mary, she do could... you know what the penalty is for providing a false alibi in a murder case? No, no, I don't even know what you're You'd talking You better tell me fast, lady, how many of those puppies you delivered. Mr. Valentine. How much of that thinking... two hours Jake really spent with you in that barn? Oh, oh. Hey, get her, she's running. No, no, we'll get her all right. I don't believe anything, that dumb old thing. That's that... all, Jake. The... Angel's Grotto. And the angel really did solve it. Well, Brooksy, the weak need accomplice didn't help Jake much. Yeah, but Mary wasn't really mixed up in it. But any... she started the ball rolling. Nothing else he could do but confess after that. I suppose she wanted to keep the farm as much as he did. And Moraga was going to take it away, sell everything. Mm-hmm. And to think it all started with our being fired. <laughs> Emily tried to do it the right way, George. She hired you to find evidence of what she thought had happened. Yeah, and... By woman's intuition. So, just on the basis of that, she tries to play angel of destruction, of vengeance. It was crazy and wrong. But she loved John Moraga. Those tears were all true. Hmm. She told us how much she loved him. First and only love of her life. I could tell. And he loved her just as much. I know, I know. Love, love, love. Hey, how come you're such an authority on the subject, Brooksy? With you around, I'll be darned if I know. Tonight, you heard firsthand how new RPM motor oil was developed years ahead of its time. Only the new atomic research tools of our scientists could make possible this remarkable motor oil progress. Here's what it means to you. Compared with the best of conventional premium type oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. It maintains the low oil consumption mileage of average engines twice as long. And it doubles protection against acid, corrosion, gummy carbon, and varnish. Stop in for new RPM, sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Jeanette Nolan was heard as Emily, Larry Dobkin as Herman, Bob Griffin as Jake, Bill Boucher as John, and Noreen Gamil as Mary. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Children who need neighborhood centers for places to play need your community chest contributions. Help keep youngsters off the streets, out of trouble. Give generously to your community chest. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.